Good evening, everybody. Good evening. To our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for it's in him we live, we move, and have our being. The pastor of this church, Reverend McKinney, Mayor McQuarrie, uh, my fellow council members, um, fellow candidates, members of the chamber, uh, citizens and friends, family, everybody who's here. My name is Freddie Strip, and I'm currently serving as your place number four council person. And it's been my honor and great privilege to serve you these past 12 years. It's been the best of times, and it's been the worst of times. And I've been a part of, of, of many great successes, and there was, there's been some good days and a few bad. Mistakes have been made. But through it all, I've given my best, and I've never shied away from the tough decision. I've learned so much. I just want to say thank you for allowing me to serve you. And if you choose to keep me, I promise to always serve with vision, <clears throat> integrity, structure, and accountability. Thank you, Mr. Strickland. I'm Mr. Evans. I'm Isaiah Evans. I would like to appreciate the chamber for coming down and Reverend McKinney open the doors that we may come in. I decided to run for the place number four because I think it's a time for a change in our community. We've lived six years without a police department where we could directly call down someone to help our safety of our people. And it's time that we move forward trying to do something that we could do for this community and our citizens. Our, our students, our children run in the street without any safety at all. We have a racetrack down Park Avenue, and we just need some time about it to kind of chastise the people that come down through our streets, speeding and other crime is being committed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Evans. And uh, I'll allow you to stay at the podium because we'll alternate and uh, I'll direct the first question to you okay. uh, this evening. Let me start with this question. This is a question uh, from the audience. Um, and uh, as a council member, what are your top three priorities? Number one, get a police department. Number two, Try to get uh, money coming into the city and some of the blight uh, houses being toned down. That's my th top three power. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Strickland? The question, Mr. Strickland, the same question was, uh, what are your top three priorities? My top three priorities would be to get a police department, get our police department back. But the biggest, uh, the biggest reason why that's taking place is because of physical responsibility. So my second priority would make sure that we we're, we're, that we would be physically responsible in being able to afford said police department, and then uh, then also to work with the mayor and council to make sure that everything is stay safe and we stay on a positive track. Thank you very much. Mr. Strickland, your question is, what are the plans to clean up the city? Uh, for example, uh, vacant houses, uh, yards, junk, etc. cetera. Um, this person says the city, the city has really been run down over the last uh, few years. And, and we'll start this question now. This is a question for both of you. Uh, we'll start with uh, Mr. Evans. Well, uh, there have been a abatement process put together to try to get the rundown houses out, uh, get people to clean up the yard. There have been an organization that come in to try to get people to clean up the yard with their help. And if you would need some help, there is an organization in place that will help you clean up your yard, clean up your uh, territory, tear down the house if it's not needing to uh, tone down, and all you have to do is just ask for this. Thank you very much. 
Mr. Strickland, same question for you. And this is a question that uh, has been posed a few different times here. So the same question is to you. Uh, what are your plans to clean up the city? Uh, vacant houses, yards, um, same sentiment. Uh, it seems like citizens feel like the city has uh, really been run down in the past. As Mr. Hibbert said, there has been an abatement process uh, already in place. The problem that we've had is that of not having a police department, we haven't been able to enforce uh, city ordinances. That's the problem we have with people speeding in town and and uh, 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 some of the other things. The, the county sheriff will not enforce our city ordinances. So what we've tried to do uh, is work individually with just, just doing what we can, first of all. Uh, we've, we've had um, the, the large item pickup, which, which has enabled people to empty trash from their own house, and that has cleaned up some. And then we've tried to make people more uh, aware of, of beautifying the city. And I think one of the things that does that is that when we can be more prideful of, of, of what we have ourselves. I think if, if, if the people took, if we all took more pride in, in our front yard and we started our house, that would go a long way towards cleaning up the entire city. Thank you. Mr. Evans, this question is for you. And, uh, this is actually a question to, to both candidates, and this is also a question uh, that has appeared a lot here. Um, and so uh, a number of people have asked this same question. I will just uh, paraphrase the question here. And basically it's this, uh, if elected, uh, what do you plan to do to get the police department up and going? Well, my plan is to work with the state department, with the county commissioner, with the, with the uh, county sheriff, and well, really to find out how much money we have coming into the city. We don't know, at the present time, I don't know exactly how much money we have in, coming into the city where we could afford a police department, but this would be one of the things I'll do. I'll make sure that we take the money that's coming into the city, we have enough money to make sure that we have a police department operate because there is, at the present time, I, I haven't seen the budget that they have for the police department, but we would try to make sure that we get to the governor, to, to the uh, county commissioner, and to the sheriff and, and ask for them to give us money to help start up a police department. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Mr. Strickland, same question for you. What are your thoughts and what would you do to get the police department up and going? The plan is very simple. The first thing we need to do is make sure that we can afford our own police department. Uh, one of the things that we've tried to do and, and the plan has, has been that the whole time is what we wanted to do was try to get at least one officer. This one officer would work uh, with, the, with the county sheriff department, with the, with the sheriff being our um, dispatch, he would also know at all times he would have constant backup with the sheriff department. We've talked to several citizens and we've gotten together with a neighborhood watch uh, to have certain citizens in certain places in certain parts of town that would have the number to call the sheriff's department to where they would recognize who this person is and, and that person could all, would not necessarily patrol his area, but they would be responsible for a certain sec a section of town. And we've had, we got five guys that's standing ready to start that at, at, at the drop of the hat. Uh, the set, and the most, but the most important thing is, is understanding the cost behind it all. Uh, I've done budgets for the police department, and I've, 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 give, I've, I've given that to the mayor, who has also taken it to uh, the State Department in Montgomery and given it to the, um, the, the, the county to, so that they can all see these things. And, and, and the county is on board, the, 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 the county administrators are on board with us um, with, the, with the plan for the one officer and that one officer working in conjunction with the citizens of this town. Thank you very much. And let me have you to stay in place there, Mr. Strickland. Uh, I'll give you this question. Um, what are your plans to help bring in businesses and in local businesses to the community? Everything that a councilman does revolves around helping his mayor. It, it's, it's a lot like a, a, a deacon in the church, so to speak. A deacon is, is, the, is the helper of, of the pastor. 
So what my plan has always been and what, it, and what I've always tried to do is to work in conjunction with the mayor and the other city councilmen. There's not a lot of people standing at the door knocking, waiting to get down here. Let's just be honest about that. But what we can do in, in, in trying to make our streets more safe and, and, and cleaning up around our own front door is make Hobson City attractive to the outside world to where, you know, uh, where somebody will see what we're doing and be more than happy to come down here and set up shop. Thank you very much. Uh, same question to you as well, Mr. Evans. And that question being, uh, what are your plans to help bring in businesses to the local community? My, <clears throat> excuse me. My plan would be to try to clean up the city a little. Go to the governor, who says he's interested in small businesses, bringing in 15, 10 or 15 people to work, and talk to the governor about some of the possibilities of, and some of the things that we could do in Hobson City with a small uh, job force. Thank you, Mr. Evans, and I'll have you stay in place uh, yes, and for this next question. And um, the question is this, uh, what is your plan to unite this community? It's a question from the audience. What is your plan to unite the community? Well, my plan would be, number one, get us a playground where we can bring our children together for safety, try to get the people in the community to come together and try to do some of the things that they used to do in this community. Uh, this used to be the attraction of most recreation for people in Birmingham, Anderson and all. And this would be to try to get them to come back to, to at the Hobson City to unite themselves with the people here in this community. Thank you very much. Same question for you. What would I do to unite the citizens? Yes, what would you do to unite the citizens in this community? One of the problems that we had, and I, and I can speak of problems because I, I've, I've been at City Hall these last, these last 12 years, is that there has been a lack of communication from the council to, to, to the citizenry. Um, so I think that in order to help better that, that, that line of communication, I think that what needs to take place is that we have uh, an open door pro policy, first of all, to where, where, where people can come and actually speak their mind and not be put down because they have a different opinion. The second, the second thing that I think needs to take place and what I've, what I've tried to do myself uh, I'll never forget the first time I read the book that they give us is that it said that you just became them. You know, I, I, and, and so what I need to learn how to do is learn how to listen. And I think that if, if by listening to people, by listening to your concerns, by, by listening to, to what you have to say, it, it, it'll, and, and see that, that we care, that the council cares, the, the mayor cares, and just seeing that and showing the pride that we have when we go somewhere that you wouldn't be ashamed of us, that that will go a long way towards uniting everybody. Because when we all get together, when we all get together, that's when we're the strongest. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me have you stay in place for the, uh, for the next question. I'm running. Okay. <laughs> Here's our, our, our next question here. Um, question from the audience says, what can we do to improve our city? What can we do? What can we do to improve our city? That's the question. And as a whole, what, what can we do to improve our city? The first thing that I would say we could do is that everybody, all the people I look out here to see right now, you need to be a council meeting on the second Monday and fourth Monday of every month. The, the, the second thing that, that, you, that we need to do is, is open those lines of communication. When you see something wrong as something that you don't like, instead of telling your neighbor or, or talking about us, Tell us and let us hear what you have to say. Uh, the third thing that, that I feel like that, that we can do is, is, is stop hating on each other. We, we need to learn how to, to, to give grace towards each other. All of us have, have made mistakes. Uh, uh, I've made mistakes and, 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 and if I'm elected again, I, I, I'm sorry, I'll be honest enough to say that I'll make another mistake. And it, but in making mistakes, 
It's not because we're not trying our best. The one thing that everybody in this room have in common is, is Hobson City. And what we have in common is that we love our town. And, and, and by showing that love to each other, by showing that love to each other, by listening to each other, and by telling your council members, your mayor, how you feel, and, and, and showing up uh, uh, at, at the council meetings, and showing up uh, at, at, at the city functions, that will go a long way towards us improving our town. Thank you very much, Mr. Triplin. Mr. Evans, <laughs> same question for you. Yes, sir. I, I think if more people would come out to council meeting and express themselves as citizens of this community and not be always down in what's happening, be a part of it. If you come out and express yourself, and talk to the council when they, when they are in that session or bring you ideas to the council and let them be able to tell, you be able to tell them what you think about it. And not have, you, you're always, you know, down on the council because all the time you don't have money to do what you want to do in it. And if we would just come together as a citizen, I, I think it would be much better if we could just come together and express ourselves to our council. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Um, looks like we have um, just a couple of questions left. Are there any other questions uh, from the audience that uh, you'd like to have uh, asked at this time? If you do, uh, please raise your hand. We'll make sure that uh, we get those up here. Okay. Right. Mr. Evans, here's a question here. Um, it says, what would you do to take the city to a higher level? What would you do to take the city to a higher level? Number one, I think the, as a council member, I would be willing to work with other city, other government officials. I'd be willing to work with the council itself, not have a difference between us. If we have a difference and make a vote, we would be able to work it out among ourselves and not have differences you telling one thing and I'm telling another. I, I try to get the people to come to council me. If, if we get them to come to council me, I think we could work out a whole lot of problems. Thank you very much. Mr. Stripling. What was the question again? I'm sorry. The question, no, that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, the question was, what would you do to take the city to a higher level? One of the things that I've tried to do since I've been uh, on the city council is look at what we can do for ourselves. Too many times um, people have tried to wait for somebody else to do something for them when, we should, when what we should be doing is trying to do as much as we can for ourselves. So one of the first things that we did, we looked at the tax structure of the city to make us in, in line with the, with the rest of the county. And, and, and looking and taking a look at all our ordinances and making sure that our ordinances was all up to date. And I think that, that one of the processes that we need to go through uh, to join the 21st century is our computer systems, uh, putting, getting all our ordinances, and I hate to even say this out loud for the world to hear, to get all our ordinances uh, onto the computer to where it, they'll be right there, easy to access. I think that would be one of the greatest things we could do that would help us get to that higher level. Then, then, then the next thing that I think that needs to take place um, is, 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 is being prideful uh, and, and, and understanding who we are. Too many times people don't, don't, don't know who we are because we don't tell people who we are. It's a shame that some of you out there live in Hobson City, but your driver's license got Anderson, Alabama on. It's a shame. We should not be ashamed of where we live. Sure, when you go up to your get your driver's license, they say that we can't put Hobson City on there, but they will if you, if you make them. And one of the things that we need to do is stop telling people that we live in Anniston because you should be proud and honor that you live in Hobson City. Thank you very much, Mr. Stripling. Uh, I have the last question here. 
Uh, no, I'm going to. Uh, I've actually got two more questions here. There's one other question uh, that I want to make sure we get to before we leave. But uh, this question uh, for you, Mr. Evans, and you can stand up. This is actually a question that's posed to uh, both gentlemen. The question is: What are your plans about improving trash pickups, such as getting uh, the BFI bins? Well, that would be one of my plans to try to get the council to understand that we could save money. Well. BFI or some other industry that pick up trash rather than having our trash picked up by local uh, function because we, we looked at the idea of the large item pick, I mean the, the, the large uh, trash bales that we have. Everybody would have the same type of uh, bale to put trash in, carry it out and to get them to pick it up. That would be one of the things I'd do. I think we'll save money by using BFI to pick up our trash. And that would be one of the things I would, I would encourage the council to do. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Mr. Stripling, same question for you. What are your plans about improving trash pickups, uh, such as getting uh, the BFI bins? For the last eight years, I've tried to get them to uh, get out of the trash business. But it has been explained to me, and, and I understand it a little bit better now. Hobson City depends on the revenue that we get from sanitation. Uh, there's, some, there's, there's three gentlemen who work on those trucks that depend on that money as part of their livelihood. I think that, that one, I think it would be a great idea if we did um, get everybody have the same trash can. Uh, I think it would be a great idea if we got out of the trash business, period. But one of the problems is the fact of, of once again, being physically re uh, responsible. Uh, it's a problem collecting the trash bill. We, if we got out of the, out of the business, what, what would take place is this, whoever, whatever company we, we uh, that, that we contracted with, we'd have to pay them depending on the city to pay us. And there's a little bit of a difference at times between the citizens paying us and us and, 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 and the bill actually being paid. So one of the things that, the, in order to do this, I think it would be a great idea, and I, I never thought about that, of us having our own trash can, everybody having the same trash can. And, 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 and having a big trash can, that would go a long way, Mr. Evans, uh, towards uh, cleaning up the city also. Uh, I think that would be a great idea. Thank you. 